It was supposed to be just another ordinary day. Well, the type of ordinary day when your billionaire Uncle Scrooge opens a new water park at Duckburg Pier. At first, the grand opening of Scrooge's Splashland was going off without a hitch. The first sign of trouble was a far off buzz in the air. It wasn't bees. The buzzing was the electronic hum of flying drones carrying something that would provide tourists, not with honey, but terror. What is that? Are those birds? Are those planes? No, it's sh 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 sharks! Ah! Yes, sh 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 sharks. Leopard sharks, to be exact. Hundreds of which were dropped from the sky, scaring tourists and causing panic. No! Ah! Oh, this lazy river is full of sharks! It was like nothing I've ever seen before. These big old sharks raining down from the sky, then folks trying to swat them away with their water tubes. Three hundred sharks were dropped on Scrooge's splash land that day. Police investigated right away, although they already had their suspicions of who had committed the crime. A certain dastardly duck who was always trying to ruin Uncle Scrooge and had a strong affection for working with sea creatures. Within an hour, an arrest was made. Roxanne Featherly reporting live from outside Glomgold Industries, where Flint Heart Glomgold has just been arrested for staging a shark attack on Scrooge McDuck's new water park. Detectives pointed to two social media check-ins at Sheila's shark store and Debbie's discount drones. Oh, here he comes. Glomgold, do you have any comments? I didn't do it! <laughs> uh, that's a good one. But really, what's your comment? But claiming innocence would remain Glomgold's story throughout his trial, which broke the record for Duckburg's shortest trial ever, as courthouse recordings show. Your Honor, I know I'm supposed to defend my client, but we, we all pretty much know he did it, right? What? You're my lawyer! Order in the court. I mean, yes, this is highly unusual, but <laughs> we all know Glomgold did it. Jory, do you want to just skip ahead? We, we find him guilty! This is a kangaroo court! Oh no, that's two doors over. This is a duck court. And that was that. A crime was committed, a suspect was found guilty, and the case was closed. Until it wasn't. One day, I received a phone call. Hello? This is a Duckburg Jail collect call from... Flint Hot Glam Gold! In that moment, I hesitated. Do I answer a call from one of my Uncle Scrooge's greatest enemies? Well, luckily for you, dear listeners, I decided to say yes. Hello? Is this Scrooge's nephew? The one with the red hat that's always trying to sound so smart? This is him. I mean, he. I mean, he's me? Yeah, whatever! It's Flint Hart Glamgold! I need your help. I'm innocent, and you're the only one who can prove it! Ha! You expect me to believe that you are innocent? I've been framed, you hear? Framed! Now, I The idea was crazy. Me? Help Flintheart Glomgold? But perhaps what was even crazier is that part of me believed he may be innocent. From Duckburg Public Radio, it's this Duckburg life. Hold on to your tails. This is a Duckburg Jail collect <laughs> call. <laughs> yeah, I sold some shots. How could you lie to me like that? Pew, 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 pew. Ooh, now that is a twist. <laughs> Act one, do the check-ins, check out. When I talked to Flintheart Glomgold in prison, he would insist over and over again he had been framed. How many times do I have to repeat myself to get you through your tiny bird brain? I have been framed! Now, I know I tried to ruin Scrooge's life any chance I get, but I promise you I didn't do it this time! He would go on to say the entire case against him hinged on the social media check-ins. Check-ins Glamgold denied he ever made. Huey, I'm a billionaire. Why would I check in at Debbie's Discount Drones just to get 5% off my first drone purchase? He did have a point. Perhaps the check-ins were a mistake. A glitch. So, I sought out an interview with Mark Beeks, inventor of the Waddle Phone which Glomgold used that day. Pew, 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 pew! What's up, Duckburg Public Radio? Mark Beeks here, CEO and inventor extraordinaire. Follow me on Instawaddle at MarkMakesItRain89, year of my birth. Um, Mr. Beeks? 
I'm calling for some information regarding your Waddle phones. I'm gonna stop you right there, because I know exactly what you're gonna ask. How are they so cramazing? I mean, I am hearing you crystal clear all the way here in Bermuda on my private vacation boat. Well, one of my private vacation boats. See, I'm like super successful because Waddle is totally hashtag crushing it right now. Uh, I wanted to ask if it might be possible to falsify a check-in from one of your Waddle phones on social media. For example, in the Flint Heart Glamgold case? What? You mean that water park, weirdo? Yeah, no go, bro. If someone's Waddle phone says they went to a place, they were definitely there, Hugh Chacho. And you're absolutely certain? Of course. Waddle phones are soup secure, and they barely leak battery acid anymore. Plus, with your Waddle phone, you can use tons of great features, like Waddle Jobs, a new app that helps you hire people for any kind of gig at the It was then I realized Mark Beeks had only agreed to talk to me so he could advertise his inventions. But with Beeks' testimony, my case was experiencing its first setback. I reached Glamgold on the phone. So, am I free yet? Not exactly, Mr. Glamgold. The inventor of the phone you use insists check-ins can't be faked. But it's clearly a setup. Flint Heart Glomgold used drones to drop sharks into a water park. Come on, it's not my style. It's only two steps. Huh? What's that? Oh, I gotta go. It's time for me to play bagpipes for the other prisoners. Oh, do the other prisoners like hearing the bagpipes? No, that's what makes it so delicious. <laughs> After speaking with Glomgold, a thought lingered. While trying to drop sharks into a water park with drones seemed exactly like Glamgold's style, actually succeeding at a plan was not. In fact, there was a previous instance of Glamgold trying to use a drone just last year. Roxanne Featherly reporting live from Mount Duckburg. Eccentric billionaire Flintheart Glomgold has been trapped in a rock slide after attempting to use a drone to laser zap his face into this mountain. Ah, help me! I'm getting control the drone! Ah! So, if Glomgold couldn't fly one drone last year, how would he suddenly be able to fly hundreds of drones? Well, because maybe he didn't. Hi, Louie Duck here. Do you have an old car sitting around that you don't use? Or even better, do you have a sweet new car? Then donate that car to Cars for Quacks. Cars for Quacks is the only charity that will give your car to a young duck in need who's been told, Louie, you can't have a car yet because you're not 16 and legally can't drive. <sighs> Whatever. Simply drive your car to the top of Killmotor Hill by McDuck Mansion, leave the keys inside, and we'll take care of the rest. Cars for Quacks, try it today, please. Welcome back to This Duckburg Life. We've arrived at Act 2 of our program, Send in the Drones. Based on past failures, it seemed Flintheart Glomgold wasn't capable of flying hundreds of drones himself. But if he didn't fly them, who did? I decided to investigate further. Welcome to Debbie's Discount Drones. Yes, I'm here to ask about a check-in that was made by Flintheart Glomgold at this business two weeks ago. I remember that guy. But I haven't seen him since last year when he bought a drone to carve his face into a mountain. Hmm. There was another guy who bought 300 drones from me recently. Here I can find it. Ah, there it is. His name was Big Tech Beagle. Big Tech Beagle? Of the Beagle Boys? Yeah, he bought 300 drones and had them delivered to... a junkyard? <laughs> yep. That's a Beagle Boy, all right. So, a Beagle Boy bought 300 drones and not Flintheart Glomgold? Even stranger, a Beagle Boy paid for something? It seemed like a huge break for the case, but the only way to learn more would be to go to the junkyard and talk to Big Tech Beagle himself. I decided to adapt an undercover persona. Testing, one, two, test, test. All right, that sounds pretty good. <clears throat> hey there, I'm looking to hire some fellow criminals. You Big Tech Beagle? Yeah, who wants to know? Oh, uh, I hadn't really thought about that part. <clears throat> uh, my name is, uh, Eddie. Eddie. Yeah, Eddie Spaghetti. You really expect me to believe your name is Eddie Spaghetti? Uh, yes? Okay, what can I do for you, Eddie? Oh, uh, I'm looking to hire someone to fly drones for some crime stuff. Oh, yeah. I just flew a bunch of drones last week for a client. Weird guy. He found me using that Jobs app for the phone. Jobs app? You mean... Waddle jobs? Nah, it's called Glom Gigs. It helps criminals hire other criminals to do crimes. And it's called Glom Gigs? 
Yeah, it's great. You can hire bad guys for anything. Robberies, forgeries, even flying drones. It was actually invented by the guy who hired me. Flintheart Glomko. Oh, you gotta be kidding me. Having discovered that Big Tech Beagle was hired to fly the drones on the Glomgigs app, I was forced to confront Glomgold about where the evidence was pointing. Luckily, I kept a cool head. Why didn't you tell me about the Glomgigs app? Calm down. So what? I created an app to hire criminals for crimes. That doesn't mean I'm a criminal. Uh, that's exactly what it means. You hired Big Tech Beagle to fly those drones. Who is Big Tech Beagle? Never heard of him. He flew the shark drones. He was hired using your app, Glomgigs. I already told you. I didn't buy those sharks, and I didn't hire anyone named Big Tech Beagle. What now? Oh, all right, all right. I gotta go. I have to report to the cafeteria for my prison job. I'm cooking haggis for everyone. Do prisoners like haggis? No, they hate it. <laughs> I found myself at a crossroads, but the intersection was at Guilty Street and Glamgold Did It Avenue. <laughs> was the easiest answer the truth? That Glamgold had actually done it the whole time? There was only one stone left unturned. It was time to pay a visit to Sheila's sharks. Hi, I'm Webby. Do you want a cool way to let your family and friends know everything you've been up to? Email is fast, but is it fun? No, that's why I use MailMonkey. MailMonkey sends a trained talking monkey right to your friends and family to tell them all about you. Honey, is that a monkey coming our way? Why, I think it is, dear. <laughs> Hello, your son just got an A on his school paper. He did? Gee, thanks, Mail Monkey. So try Mail Monkey today. The better way to monkey around. <laughs> you heard the kid. Try me. We've arrived at our final act. Act three, something fishy. Good day and welcome to Sheila's Sharks. We take a bite out of the competition. How may I help you? I'm here to confirm a check-in made at your store two weeks ago. Were you visited by Flintheart Glomgold. It was the moment of truth. I wanted a crack in the case, some shadow of a doubt. Instead... Oh, yeah, Glomgold. Oh, he's my best customer. He came in and bought a bunch of sharks the day the water park was attacked. He... he did? Yeah, he said he was going to use them to get revenge on Scrooge McDuck. <laughs> Love the guy, but he's a few shrimp short of a barbie, isn't he? There it was. Irrefutable proof that Glomgold had committed the crime. I was so frustrated, I decided to throw all my files into Sheila's trash. Excuse me, do you have a trash can for complete wastes of time? Oh, yeah, yeah. It's our regular trash can. I called Glomgold in jail to confront him one last time. So now am I free? I'm giving up on your case. What? Why? Because I talked to Sheila. She said you purchased sharks from her the day of the crime. <sighs> oh, Matt. I was hoping you wouldn't find that out. Goodbye, Glamgold. Huey, wait. Look, I bought some sharks. I admit it. And I know how that sounds. But I didn't use those sharks to attack Scrooge's water park. I bought them because I had a different plan. What? It was genius. I was going to disguise the sharks as butlers and get them to work for your Uncle Scrooge. And then, one day, after years of loyal service without raising any suspicions, I gave them the cue to attack, and Scrooge would never see it coming! <laughs> as I hung up on Glamgold, which admittedly was bad manners, I felt the weight of my enormous failure. How could I be so foolish? How could I trust a pathological liar? According to Junior Woodchuck Rule 983, sometimes you just gotta throw in the towel. But then I received this phone call. Hello, is this Huey Duck? Yes, hello. Is this Sheila? What can I do for you? I was taking out the trash when I saw some of the Glomgo case files you threw away with pictures of the shark attack at the water park. Oh, yes. I'm sorry about making a scene. Well, here's the thing. I looked at the pictures of sharks that attack the water park, and those are leopard sharks. But I only sell tiger sharks. So, what you're saying is... Leopard sharks are rare. 
only found in the waters of Bermuda. The sharks that attacked the water park, <laughs> they weren't from my store. They came from somewhere else. So Glomgold was right. He didn't plan the attack on Uncle Scrooge's water park. But then who did? And why did Bird Muda sound so familiar? Then I remembered. I am hearing you crystal clear all the way here in Bird Muda, here in Bird Muda, Bird Muda, Bird Muda. Oh, sorry, the tape is skipping. All the way here in Bird Muda on my private vacation boat. Suddenly, it all made sense. I decided to give Mark Beeks a call. Shillo! Back for more, little duck boy. What is it? Want to hear more about my sweet new Waddle products? Actually, I do, Mr. Beeks. I was hoping to hear more about the Waddle Jobs app. Oh, excellent. What was it you needed to know, besides the fact that it's a total game changer? How does it compare to other apps that came before it that do the exact same thing? Like, say for example, Glomgigs. Glom gigs? <laughs> why, why, why would you ask about that lame app? It's just, after doing some research, I discovered Glom gigs was released months before Waddle Jobs, and the two apps are so similar. I mean, it's the technology game, baby. So what? I copied Glomgold's idea but made it better. It's called innovation. But Waddle Jobs still isn't popular, is it? Look, I wasn't going to lose business to some three-foot-tall kilt-wearing weirdo. So yeah. Maybe I hacked into Glomgold's waddle phone to make it look like he checked into those stores, and maybe I was the one who hired Big Tech Beagle to fly the leopard sharks I bought in Bermuda, and maybe I framed Glomgold for attacking Scrooge's Splashland so everyone would start using the Waddle Jobs app instead! Is that what you want to hear? Yes. Actually, it is. Oh, wow. Whoops. <laughs> hey, you're not recording this, are you? Roxanne Featherly reporting for Duckburg Public Radio. Flint Heart Glomgold was released from prison today after billionaire inventor Mark Beeks was recorded confessing to the water park shark attack. I told you I'm gonna do it! Glomgold was then arrested again later that day for trying to train sharks to be butlers. Yes. Sadly, Glomgold's freedom didn't last long, but at least now he's in jail for the right crime trying to teach sharks how to serve appetizers. Curse you, butler sharks! Curse you, MacDuck! For this Duckburg Life, I've been... Huey, I'm sorry to interrupt your show, but I just got a very strange call from Magica Dispel. She says she's been arrested for summoning a demon to attack Uncle Scrooge, but that she's been framed. She says you're the only one who can help her? Oh, no. For this Duckburg Life, I've been Huey Duck. You can let go of your tails now. Here, Uncle Donald, read this. Powers, 